Well, 11 is bigger than 9. So... I don't do as many comparisons as I used to, but as soon as I picked up the Mi 11i, I felt this would be a fun pair to pit against each other. Fight for blood! I just haven't done that in a while. Here's a part of the verdict right at the top of the video. These are both stonking good options that really highlight the competition we can find in this sort of crossover price tier, just as we jump from nicer mid-rangers into more premium solutions. Xiaomi, OnePlus, they deserve a ton of credit for keeping this price level healthy. And it's always nice to have some different solutions in this space, so you can pick and choose the features that make the most sense for your needs. I've spent some quality time with both, holding my SIM card. You'll pardon, I'm way more familiar with OnePlus software, but I feel I'm getting up to speed on MIUI. This is so good. There's lots in common here. Top of the line processors, as much RAM as entry level laptops, goodly amounts of storage, fast refresh rates on pretty OLEDs. It's like these two were grown in a lab to do battle. So buckle up folks, we've got a lot of ground to cover going feature by feature. I'm gonna try to move pretty quick. Starting off with displays, let's call it a tie. Both have flat screens to the enjoyment of many enthusiasts. They're both colorful, decently bright in daylight, pretty close to the same brightness. My two phones, the OnePlus screen leans just a touch ruddier and the Mi 11 has a slightly yellower hue. You're gonna be fine on either side. Fingerprint sensor. Xiaomi has an easy win for the Mi 11i. Having a tactile piece of hardware will always be better. Fact, you cannot beat the incredible responsiveness of a proper landmark that your thumb can feel, no matter how good your muscle memory is on an in-display fingerprint sensor. Haptics, technically a tie, but I'm giving this one to the OnePlus. Sure. Personal preferences, bias, blah, blah, blah. OnePlus has crafted the most unique feel I've ever felt on any phone I've reviewed. Making the phone resemble a hollow wood block is a super specific aesthetic. The Xiaomi haptics are sharp and precise, but I love what OP has done making something different. Battery and charging? One plus. If we're talking about battery life, then we're kind of in a tie where my personal use between these two phones is in margin of error territory. But also adding in battery charging, I have to give this to One Plus for fast wired charging and decently quick wireless charging. Audio. One Plus. I thought it super charming that Xiaomi included a headphone dongle in the box, but the overall quality and performance win goes to OnePlus. With a pass-through dongle, OnePlus drives a higher quality signal, and the speakers just edge out the Mi 11i, which we can take a quick listen to here. <laughs> Camera tech. One plus. The main camera sensors are in a dead heat. 48 megapixels versus 108 megapixels, that's not the comparison. They both spit out 12 megapixel JPEGs by design. The sensor size is the killer feature for both, and both are pretty big. The small size advantage for the OnePlus probably won't deliver much difference in real-world output. So while both are crazy good HDR shooters with stunning depth of field for phones, I have to give the nod to OnePlus. Just slightly better at the detail and mosaic issues that pixel binning sensors can show. This is OnePlus's third generation of pixel binning phone, and I think they're delivering more consistent results than Xiaomi. Regardless, both phones show how much more important sensor size is over hardware image stabilization on smaller sensors. And you kind of need to be really bad at photography to think that you're somehow getting a better camera just because it has optical image stabilization paired with a smaller sensor. Like criticizing these two phones and making a recommendation for a phone with a smaller sensor and OIS around the same price would mean you're 
awful at tech and probably pretty bad at photography, you have no business making those kinds of recommendations. And of course, I have a video on that topic going into more detail on the OnePlus 9. Now, while we're really close on the main camera sensors, even down to some of the wackier features like 8K video recording, the OnePlus takes a commanding lead on the ultra wide. This is maybe the best ultra wide shooter on the market today in North America. Better photos, better video, more controls, more options. And overall, OnePlus has greatly improved their support for third party camera apps to really drive these sensors harder. Main camera showdown, super, super close. Overall camera experience, OnePlus. Switching gears, talking about software, I've got to give the overall win to OnePlus. I'm a big fan of Oxygen OS, but MIUI has been rocking my socks these last couple weeks. How animated and responsive this skin is, Xiaomi deserves a ton of credit. This is a snappy phone. And honestly, I'm not trying to blow smoke to Xiaomi fans. It's so close to being another tie where the differences are mostly going to come down to personal preferences. I have to give OnePlus a slight edge for including just a little less bloat and not being as cagey about things like malware scanning or including basic services that seem to track user data like the Mi 11 calculator app. Support is also really close. I've been getting a higher frequency of updates from OnePlus, but the MIUI 12.5 update was substantial and it was really good. Overall phone performance? Xiaomi, with a small asterisk. This one is hard to untangle and I can't completely explain it all here. So you'll have to catch my standalone videos and my benchmarking blog posts on somegadgetguy.com for more granular info. The Snapdragon 888 is a thirsty chip that runs kinda hot. In most of my performance testing, CPU bound tasks are really close between these two phones, but GPU performance is handled a lot different. OnePlus seems to employ a limiter which caps frame rates in all the games I test. Xiaomi just lets the GPU run unchecked. It's not super easy to disable the OnePlus limiter. You have to use some ADB commands so it can be really frustrating when a game is locked to 60 frames per second when you know it could be played at a higher frame rate. But it's not a runaway victory for the Mi 11i. There are many games where the GPU will run so hot that the phone will spike and then crater, and then spike performance and then crater, making the game kinda unplayable. It's no good having this super hot GPU if you really can't use it. That said, because the OnePlus GPU limiter is not really consumer accessible, I have to give the edge to Xiaomi for performance, but just know your mileage will vary depending on the apps and games you use. You cannot trust synthetic benchmarking scores. One number score cannot predict which games and services are going to perform better. Network performance? Xiaomi. 5G connections around my neighborhood have been really close, but Xiaomi seems to make slightly better use of my home Wi-Fi. <laughs> this is super close, but Xiaomi takes a win for my data testing. And lastly, additional technologies. I gotta call this a tie. I can't tell you how happy I was to see an IR blaster on the Mi 11i. That's so stinking cool. And if this were my daily driver phone, I'd be so stoked to run that as my universal remote. Xiaomi can't quite land a win here though, as I also really like that OnePlus includes USB 3 support with video output. The Xiaomi is USB 2. It's sort of a pick your poison deal here. So I can't quite claim an outright winner for additional features. But getting down to brass tacks, I think the Xiaomi represents a slightly better overall bang for buck. While the OnePlus 9 is the outright better phone, but at a higher price in most regions. Were I to pick personally between the two, it would come down to some small differences in real world performance and the one critical advantage on the ultra wide camera pushing me over to the OnePlus 9. I use that ultra wide a lot. For someone more concerned about getting the nicest version of that core all rounder phone experience, the Mi 11i 
has been a delight. Increasingly, these two phones and these two brands are starting to feel like the starter luxury car tier of phones. It's not that there can only be one winner between these two. It's kind of like the fight between BMW and Audi when we're looking at three series cars. These phones are just getting out of the nicer mid-ranger segment and the emotions around them should also be a bit more fulfilling. And it's really exciting to see how both of these phones are trading shots with Galaxy S21 and iPhone 12s. Really trying to use both as my main phones for the last couple weeks. I've laid it out there. I've shared my personal preferences on what would take the win. Which one would earn your cash if you were shopping between the OnePlus 9 and the Xiaomi Mi 11i? Drop some comments down below. Let's get into some fun debates. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. I greatly appreciate those of you who are. Checking out the links down below, maybe you're shopping a little merch. That kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can catch a full list of all my affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider, just maybe, checking out the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech pals on the web, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next showdown.